morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. A gift to pray with you all, friends, before we begin. Uh, moving forward, we'll leave this door open. If you need to perform your ablutions, and use the lavatory. Go down these stairs. For safety reasons, we are now keeping the outside door uh, locked every time we gather in person. Let us pray on page 7. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Let us, pray. Let us pray together, Almighty God. To you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Christ our Lord. Amen. have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name for you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever Amen. Amen. please be seated friends blessings Ann Jones blessings Sheldon A reading from Isaiah. I was ready to be sought out by those who did not ask, to be found by those who did not seek me. I said, here I am, here I am, to a nation that did not call on my name. I held out my hands all day long to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good, following their own devices. A people who provoke me to my face continually sacrificing in gardens and offering incense on bricks, who sit inside tombs and spend the night in secret places, who eat swine's flesh with broth of abdominal things in their vessels, who say, keep to yourself, do not come near me, for I am too holy for you. These are a smoke in my nostrils, a fire that burns all day long, See, it is written before me. I will not keep silent, but I will repay. I will indeed repay into their laps their iniquities and their ancestors' iniquities together, says the Lord. Because they offered incense on the mountains and reviled me on the hills, I will measure into their laps full payment for their actions. Thus says the Lord, as the wine is found in the cluster and they say, do not destroy it, for there is a blessing in it. So I will do for my servants' sake, and not destroy them all. I will bring forth descendants from Jacob and from Judah, inheritors of my mountains. My chosen shall inherit it, and my servants shall settle there. Amen. The word of the Lord.
A reading from Galatians. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and garden, guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you <coughs> were as as many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. He, as he stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes. He did not live in a house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus has commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles. But he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion. For many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then. The demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herd saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country, when people came out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him, but Jesus sent him away saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. 
In the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated, friends. Ten points for you. Blessings to our friends online, Joanne and Jones, my mother, Candida, Ellie, David. Blessings. Ten points to all of you for being here because it's Father's Day. It's the gift of Juneteenth. It's the sun is out. There's no June gloom. And uh, I was hoping for better scripture, but alas, it is a scripture about demons. So blessings to you for being here, friends. Whew, really, Jesus? You couldn't give me a scripture about turning water into wine. So how are we reminded by the scripture what we are made for, dear friends? Interesting. All the demons that Jesus confronts have three things in common, in my opinion. They cause self-destructive behavior in the victim. The victim feels trapped in that condition. And they are separate from normal living or even in the family circle. If we define demons as those forces that have captured us, prevented us from becoming what God intends us to be, we are then, I think, surrounded by, perhaps even possessed by, as many demons as those whom Jesus encountered. I wonder, addictions, obsessions, destructive actions, behaviors, and what are some similarities perhaps between this demon-possessed man and the demons that possess us? The man is totally cut off from family, from the neighborhood, from his church, his synagogue, society. He didn't live with people. He wasn't at the Guild Hall coffee hour. He lived in the tombs, caves where they buried dead people. And then he was also sometimes driven by the demon into the wild. I wonder, was he already in the living dead, separated from day-to-day -day life and community? But I don't want us to get stuck on the demons. I'm trying to wrap some words around this so that I think, uh, how is scripture challenging me this day to describe to explore what spiritual disruption or disintegration might look like in my life. I think a reality all of us have experienced. That Jesus knows himself, or that this man knows himself to be legion, means the causes, the sources, the uh, disruption, this disintegration is, 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 is great. Historically, isn't it interesting? Legion refers to a Roman army unit of about 6,000 soldiers. So when I hear this man say that he is legion, I have been overrun, I'm divided, I'm, I'm, I'm fragmented, I'm fractured. My life is broken into 6,000 pieces. Have you ever felt like that? This man is lost to himself. He has no center. He no longer understands who he is, no identity. He has been dispossessed of himself, of his humanity, his life is shattered into pieces. He is alien to himself. He's dead to himself. When you look into the mirror, who are you? Can you 
truly say you recognize yourself? I don't know what's come over me. I'm just not myself today. Head full with conflicting thoughts and voices. We, we chase each thought. We get nowhere. We, you've heard me say, uh, the desert fathers and desert mothers, uh, the, the eight deadly thoughts. What, what are the things that consume my mind? Constantly, silently wondering if I'm going crazy. Exiled of myself. I know what this man's life feels like. I know each time when a life is shattered in a thousand pieces, dreams, relationships, death of a loved one, faith, beliefs, identity. I think we know what it's like to be legion. I don't know what in your life, dear friends and my friends online, I don't know what in your life has shattered. I don't know the thousands of pieces in which you have lived. I don't know the legion of your life. But I share with you today Whatever it might be, it is in that place that Christ comes. Jesus comes to the lesion of our lives. Jesus steps into the land of this foreign country, this land of lesion. He comes to us as the one with inner clarity, focus, knowing, understanding, his, his unity, his wholeness, integration. Are you with me? He is the image of who we are and who we can become. That's why every day in my own life, I will always say, even now, Jesus, reveal yourself to me. Jesus is unafraid of death. Jesus doesn't care if you're in the tomb. He's not distracted by the man's craziness. Ha! He's not repulsed by the man's nakedness. Legion holds no power over Jesus. And what does scripture say to us, friends? When this man saw Jesus, he fell down and he shouted, What have you to do with me, son of the Most High God? Despite the presence of shattered lesion, the true image lies within, I believe. We are called to be image bearers, made in the image of divine love. That is true for us. That is true for the man in the gospel reading today. This is what strikes me. So imagine. We have somebody here at St. Mary's, like this man, and comes to our coffee hour one day or interrupts me wonderfully as I try to share a word from the Lord and preach with you and says, I have been healed. And I react like I would hope I'd go, yay. What do the townspeople do? <gasps> they are very afraid. I know that historically, I think, uh, pigs were expensive property. And, and so the livelihood of this townspeople's, uh, they lost their livelihood perhaps because now they didn't have uh, the, the pigs to sell to the Roman occupiers for food. Uh, they didn't care that he was healed. They said, Jesus, get out of here, man. They were afraid. I don't understand. Your, your neighbor says, I'm healed, and they go, don't tell me that. They could have rejoiced with the man, but I wonder to do that, they would have to be uh, healthier themselves. So I'll keep chewing on that this week. As Jesus stands before us as the mirror, the image, the truth teller of who we are really supposed to be. 
I think Jesus reveals the original beauty of our creation, the original wonderfulness of you. <laughs> Do you know how awesome you are? Says Jesus. I believe every time we dream. Jesus stands before us and challenges me in the places in which lives have become fragmented, distorted in the ways in which we are not true to ourselves in the times when our identity has been lost and shattered. So for every story we can tell of Legion, our wonderful friends, that the gospel reading today shows us there's a counter story, a story of how our life was put back together again, how we are given back ourselves and how we sit at the feet of Jesus and then Jesus shocks me one more time because I would love to sit all day at Jesus' feet. I don't know about you. I wish I could. And what does Jesus say? Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. <laughs> don't give another fancy sermon. Don't iron your vestments again, Lester. Return to your home. Share how much God has done for you. If there's one thing that God has done for me, God has blessed me. I am beyond grateful for how much beauty God has given for me. What has God done for you, friend? How has God touched you and healed the 6,000 shattered pieces in your life? My profound healing, true healing, I experienced in two ways. One standing next to somebody who just amazes me and saying, sitting at the back today, Angie, and then to be witness to the gift of three individuals who show me and remind me, what does it mean to live and laugh and sing in the light of God? A fiery 16-year-old who roars like a lion. A creative and brilliant 11-year-old who I was shocked to just hear sing a song of joy. And a wonderful 8-year-old who constantly paints and reminds me of the beauty that God gives us. What has God done for you in your life? That's what God has done for me. I invite you to share with us how God has healed your 6,000 pieces. Amen. I invite you to stand as we are able as we share a summary of our faith by praying together the Nicene Creed on page 11. We believe in one God.
us with scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge us the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We receive from the Holy Spirit the glory of the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Through the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one who will come after the Mass of the Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. Amen. In confidence, we offer our prayers to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy, that all fathers and those who have taken on a fatherly role may be blessed this Father's Day. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy, that the church shine with the glory of the face of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy, that the harvests of summer be justly distributed among the hungry. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy, that all those who have recently graduated may continue to grow in knowledge and wisdom. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have For the dying, the sick, the lonely, especially for all involved with the recent shooting at St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in Vestavia Hills, Alabama, for you know the names of each, even as we call upon you to remember them, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy that all of us gathered here may have recreation and refreshment this Sunday and every Sunday, that each Sabbath bring us closer to the health and wholesomeness of God's reign. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the whole body of Christ and all who bear his holy name, for Michael, our presiding bishop, John, our bishop, for clergy, laity, and all who offer ministries, that we may serve Christ with glad and generous hearts. In our Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the province of the Episcopal Church of South Sudan. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, God of all nations, cure your servants and give us health. Keep us faithful to the gospel of your Son. To you be glory forever. Amen. Friends, the peace of the risen Christ be always with you. Each other in peace. Peace be with you, Joanne. God has given me the friendship of St. Mary's and knowing you a gift. Thank you for your friendship, Joanne. Stephanie, Kayla, blessings. Oh, it's red out there. Blessings to you. Uh, let's keep hodling. Let's keep hodling. Blessings Ellie and Dave, blessings Joanne, Candida, blessings to you. Thank you for the Father's Day message. Gogo, Shemaine, my mother. And Joan, strength, Sheldon, blessings. Strength, brother, keep making your song of hope to a world in need of hope. Uh, blessings to you all. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here on this virtual tightrope of hope. The screws keep coming out. Again. The phone just tilts up. So we need all of the things we have. No one choose it for my last thing. Okay. Yeah, we're now what about the um, creative benefits? They wasn't the they, they yeah, they open it and they come and leave it up. Okay, I know Tom is working on trying to get it fixed. But we have Tom Davis knows about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're He's trying to get it fixed. You gotta find the right guy. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Thank I'll you. make a slight announcement. Blessings, dear friends. Thank you for being here online. And thank you for your attention. And thank you for celebrating with us. If you have prayers, please type them in the comment section. And please know, call me anytime, email me anytime uh, if you are in need uh, of anything. Uh, and especially, I wanna hear how. Jesus heals you on your journey. Blessings.
Welcome, welcome, welcome to St. Mary's Episcopal Church, uh, the fun side of the Pacific Ocean, two blocks from Main Beach. It is a gift to share this space with you, a gift to pray with you, and um, if you are new here, please uh, be sure to share with me what's on your playlist today as we go over to the Guild Hall for refreshments. Thank you so much, Tina and Leslie, for refreshments. Thank you, Dennis, for making coffee this morning. It's awesome. We have some announcements, announcements, announcements. We have Jocelyn Aitken. Is that how I pronounce it? Aitken Esquire. <laughs> Previous senior warden. ECW, Episcopal Church Women, Treasurer. I am here today in the capacity of uh, ECW. And which is Episcopal Church Women. And um, I want to call your attention to our summer series of concerts. And in the past Sundays, we've had someone here to explain the various charities that we give our money away to. So you're, you're very aware of what this money does that we work you know, all summer to collect. And that's a very, very important part of the process that you understand what, what our mission is. But the flip side of that is like, you gotta come to the concerts so we can earn all this money to give away. And so that's the part I wanna stress today. There is a page in your bulletin, and I wish it were in color because all of these artists are so beautiful and colorful. Um, and we have five concerts. You can come to one, you can come to all, you can order food, you can order drinks but it's just a fabulous experience to sit out on our, our ocean view sunset patio and enjoy music and food and fellowship. And I just don't know where you can find a better experience than that. But to get your tickets, there is a website and it's in here and I wish this were the kind that you could click on, um, but I'm gonna break this down for you so you can remember and see how easy it is. It looks like a bunch of letters, but it's ECW St. Mary's LB. And the St. Mary's, we don't do any punctuation, no periods, no apostrophes, just St. Mary's LB, that's Laguna Beach, so you know we can differentiate from all the ECW St. Mary's throughout the land. Um, this is the one in Laguna Beach. So, ecwstmarieslb.org, click on that and you can get your tickets. And we do have tickets available for that first concert that's coming up next Saturday. And we'd love to see you there. They, in the past, they've always sold out, so I'm, I'm expecting that there's gonna be a rush toward the end, so don't get left out. Anyway, come to our concerts. It's, it's a great experience and we do really good things. Wonderful, thank you. Feel free, to, feel free to take your bulletin with you and those friends of ours online, they can click on the link online. So we have Barbara Van Gaspic, the current year's senior warden, and who has an announcement. Good morning, everybody. I just wanted to let you know that St. Mary's was really very well represented yesterday at the uh, march for, to lift up the poor and the working poor, those who are on the edge of society who are struggling to survive. This was a, a march just to say, to make evident that they're here in our, in our communities and that we support them. So I want to thank uh, Jim and Christian, uh, Jocelyn, who just gave a talk, and also um, Shauna and Shanna. Thank you so much for all turning up yesterday uh, to walk in our St. Mary's blue shirts. Um, <clears throat> and the other thing that leads me on to blue shirts, we have to found a very good source for all the St. Mary's t-shirts or polo shirts. So I'll be getting uh, coming around to each of you asking you if you want a shirt. We finally found a place that, that does them and does a really good job. So we can all be branded when we go out and, and do St. Mary's work and have our blue shirts on. Make the community know who we are. Thank you. Thank you. And now uh, another announcement from Jim Van Gaspar. Sir so, Jim. Thank you, sir. This is a fire, this is a health and, health and safety notice. This is a fire exit over here. Halfway down the stairs, there's a door. That's the door we want to keep locked for security reasons. However, 
the lock is falling off. Now our senior warden, knows, our junior wardens know about this and they're trying to find someone who can fix it. But please don't use that door very much. And if you do use it when you get outside, make sure it's closed and locked. Thank you. And we have another announcement. Tita Tips, previous senior warden, the one who signed my contract to be the rector here. Inside scoops. Thank you. Jocelyn, thank you so much for the announcement of the ECW concert series. I want to highly encourage you to come to these concerts. Leslie, my partner, and I signed up for actually the season passes last year. And we didn't get to go to every single concert, but I'll tell you, it was worth it to donate the money. And each concert we went to, including a wine tasting then, was fabulous. So for, for getting to know the people here, getting to know each other a little bit deeper and enjoying time together, I highly, highly encourage you to come to the concerts or at least donate by signing up for season tickets. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you there. Gratitude. Again, please feel free to take this bulletin with you. Um, why was the rector not at the march yesterday? I was preaching at a, at a funeral in Los Angeles of uh, Hewens Fernandez. I've known them and I was part of that family since I moved to this country. The first time I had eggnog, November 2000. So Hewens, may he rest in peace. I was preaching at his funeral and then I had the gift of uh, celebrating with uh, the seventh bishop of Los Angeles, John Taylor, a diocesan-wide celebration of Juneteenth at St. John's Cathedral on Adams and Figueroa. And so that's where the rector was. Okay. Now, we transition to really fun stuff. Birthdays, Thanksgivings, anniversaries. All right. So, birth anniversaries can accept there. The bad news is going to stand over here. Don't worry, there's a reason I'm doing it. Anniversary is there, Beth is here, and Barry Ford is going to come forward because I want to give thanks for. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm doing. Thanks. <laughs> so, Ford. So, we've got thanks to you. Anniversary. <laughs> All right, so birthdays. I want to talk about all the other women. Last Thursday, coming to January, good to see you back in town. This coming Thursday, how many seasons together? 24 seasons. And I'm giving thanks for uh, emergency communications. Yes, sir. Dispatcher at the place that brings my family the most joy among all of us, Disneyland. Oh, Disneyland! Disneyland, Thanksgiving for that night. All right. Let us pray. Holy God, I give you thanks, and we give you thanks for being called in community. I give you thanks for service in making sure that those who visit the places of happiness and joy and be safe. We give you thanks for birthdays and the witness and the presence and the gift of these who you call by name to be your disciple on their birthdays. And we give you thanks for the gift of relationship and taking that journey together for 25 seasons. And we lift these prayers up in community. We lift them up as you envelop each of these persons with your loving touch, your nurturing touch, your blessing, as you hold them as the apple of your eye and hide them under the shadow of your wings, all this we lift up in the name of Jesus, because I know you love it when we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey! No birthdays online. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and our labor to the Lord.
lift up this Eucharist joyfully and with joy as we give thanks to the altar flowers given this Sunday to the glory of God from Mark Clymer and Mark Mullendore in celebration of 24 years together and from Susan Moore in loving memory of James Moore. And on this Father's Day, we also lift up this Eucharist. God of love, today we ask your blessing on all who give their lives with the Father's love. Bless your fathers and wise grandfathers. Bless love uncles and caring godfathers. Bless men who embrace fatherhood through adoption or foster parenting, step parenting or single parenting. Bless men still waiting and hoping to have fathers. Bless fathers who have lost a child. Bless children who have lost their father. Bless all who fathers were loving. Bless all who fathers failed to meet their needs. continue on page 13 of our leaflet, dear friends. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you father almighty creator of heaven and earth through jesus christ our lord who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life por tanto te alabamos unieron nuestros voces con arcángeles en arcángeles y con todos los coros celestiales que proclamado la gloria de tu nombre por siempre cantan este himno. And to reveal the riches of your grace, you look with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you on the night before he died for us. Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it and gave it to them and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. My Lord and my God. As supper was ending, he Jesus took the cup of wine again. He gave thanks to you, gave it to them. It said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins whenever you drink it. Do this for the remembrance of me, my Lord and my God. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Now, gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts, 
that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made in the fullness of time. Bring us with St. Mary, the God-bearer, and all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, in the language of your heart, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us.
like you to turn to page 15 of your leaflet, friends, as we share in the post communion prayer. Please stand as you are able. And let us pray together. Eternal God of the heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of the Son and Savior Jesus Christ. And you have sent us the spiritual food as a sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the Friends, trust your life to the Lord, the open spaces, and the time of adventure to the life that pulses through the rain-drenched streets and mountain heights to the love that sustains us through feast and famine. But God's hope be a clearing sky before you wait, compassing your heart and, a, and, and the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you from this day forth and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Now we sing. Mm -hmm.